Villainous, by It's Underslash Kingston, on AO3. Episode 21, Chapter 14, Museum. The clock struck 10.30, and Ochako slowly opened her balcony door. She floated to the ground. The box Toga had brought her was beside her. The moon was full in the sky, providing some light, though hardly enough for Ochako to see. There you are, little hero. Toka stood up from the spot at the base of the tree and dusted herself off. The gravity hero almost fell out of the air as the blonde startled her. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she sounded like she was almost going to laugh. It's fine, I just didn't see you. Ochako landed safely and caught the box as she released her quirk. I meant to ask a while ago, can you see better than most people in the dark? Yeah, the moonlight's enough for me. Did you bring yourself a flashlight, Chaco? Toga asked, eyeing the box she held. Ochako hoped her night vision wasn't good enough to see the blush that made its way across her face at the nickname. Yeah, I've got my phone. Okay, so, fill me in. What's the plan? Ochako gestured for Toga to follow her as they began talking the route back to the museum. Well, if I tell you, it ruins the surprise. This is sounding more and more like an ambush. Toga looked around, taking a few precautious steps backwards. I swear it's not. Ochako stopped to look at her, but could hardly make out her figure in the dim light as it was filtered through the trees that passed. We're just grabbing some stuff from UA's museum, and your surprise is something in there. They've got cameras and guards that walk past sometimes, but the guards always use high powered flashlights, so you can usually see them coming. I already dealt with the cameras by looping the footage. They won't record us. Ochako looked hopeful towards Toga. Fine, I'll trust you on this. Explain the rest. Why paint and trash bags? Toga seemed equally skeptical and curious. Trash bags are for carrying everything out, and the paint is for framing a game that hates UA. See, if we just take a few items, it's incriminating because of what those items are. But if we take everything and trash the place, it looks like someone else did it. Ochako explained. I didn't need the explanation on why framing people works, but thanks. Let's get this done. Toga grinned. At least Ochako assumed she did. There was an 80% chance she had a smile on her face at any given time. The pair made their way to the front doors of the museum encountering no trouble from the guards as they did so. With the cameras already out of the picture, they just needed to get in. Damn it. Ochako groaned. What? Togo was busy peering through the window, watching for anyone inside. I forgot how to figure out how to get in. The hero's face flushed with embarrassment. Who plans a robbery and forgets the part where they enter the building? Really? Togo giggled, definitely amused. I'll handle this, hero. Sliding a small metal item that Ochako believed to be a lockpick out of her pocket, Toga crouched down level with the door lock. Huh. She paused, turning the knob curiously. What? Ochako crouched down beside her, maybe a little too close, because when Toga turned to look at the hero, their faces were mere inches apart. The gravity hero felt her face redden a little bit as she stood back up, clearing her throat. Toga just smiled slyly as she stood up next to the hero. The door wasn't locked. She giggled lightly. Seems like either the most obvious ambush or your guards are just a little stupid. She pushed the door open and slid the lockpick back into her pocket. Ochako wondered if she always had that on her or if she'd expected to have needed it tonight. Let's do this quick. Someone will find out about the cameras eventually. Ochako whispered as she shut the door behind them. She wasn't sure why she was whispering now, but it felt right. Toga hummed in agreement. She dug her phone out of her pocket. Ochako did the same, and they both began looking around with their flashlights. Trash the place and grab everything, right? Toga confirmed. Yeah, here. Ochako handed her a trash bag from the newly opened box, and Toga began filling it with the items around her a huge chunk of armor from a retired hero, then the stealth of designated villain swords, so on and so forth. 
Ochako made a beeline to her literal partner in crime's mask, carefully placing it into the cat box and settling it to the side. Ooh, is my present in there? Togo was suddenly behind her, leaning over her shoulder to try to read the nameplate. Ochako covered it with her hand, shooting the blonde off. Don't try to peek, she said, grabbing her own bag and loading pieces in. Eraserhead's old eye guard, Wash's old circular door, All Might's Silver Age collectibles. The hero had plenty of their own artifacts. Light chatter from outside caught their attention. Toga's light went out, and Ochako copied the action, quickly ducking behind a pedestal to avoid the beaming light that swept through the closed windows. All clear, a guard said to another, who responded with a, As expected, who's gonna break in with us on the case? Footsteps receded, and noise of radio static wailed down until neither could be heard. They waited a few more moments of silence in the dark before Toga stood up. So full of themselves, Toga said as she turned her flashlight back on, continuing to pack everything up. Ochako stood by the window, watching them get further and further away. After an hour, and another security check safely dodged, most of the museum was packed into black trash bags. Toga had definitely been more effective than Ochako, who kept looking over his shoulder to watch for more guards out the window. Toga had tried to reassure her that they'll hear them like the first time, but given up when the hero wasn't listening. I think we should start breaking everything now, Ochako said, adding the last pile of bag that lined the edge of the room, out of sight from the windows. We got everything in the bags quietly, but the noise will definitely draw guards. So do the paint first, then break everything, Toga said, tossing the can to Ochako. Okay. On the furthest wall from the entrance, directly visible from the front door, or its surrounding windows, Ochako began making the logo of the Red Street Rhinos. She floated herself on the roof and started the outline. She practiced it for a while earlier that afternoon, tracing her fingers across her desk as if she were drawing it onto paper. It was simple to remember, honestly. A red, peening rhinosaur with a leather jacket holding a chainsaw. A bit immature, maybe, but easy to recognize nonetheless. Once it was finished, Ochako stepped back to see her work. Oh, RSR, Toga said, standing beside her. Looks just like theirs. Good one. Thanks. Ochako smiled, admiring her own work. She thought it looked pretty damn good. Now, let's get to breaking everything. It only took about ten minutes to ruin the entire museum with broken glass from the coverings to shard ropes, courtesy of Toga, and bashed in nameplates and placates under the knocked-over pedestals. Toga eyed the large, golden All Might statue in the room. Hey, the real Rhino's boss is actually a Rhino, and he'll definitely use his strength to knock the All Might statue down. You want to try? Yeah, hopefully it's not too heavy, Ochako said. Wait, let's get everything over the fence first. They're definitely going to come running if we manage to topple that thing. Think of all the noise it'll make. Smart move, hero. Toga checked for guards outside the window before grabbing a bag in each hand and lifting them off the ground. Oh, that's heavier than I thought. Ochako touched the bags, making it weightless. We can get them out quickly like this. She went through and touched each one. Surprisingly, not using that much effort. Most of the bags were light, and she lifted way higher things for training. Thanks. Toa carried out four bags, and Ochako grabbed the other three. Seven bags full of UA Museum collection. Over the fence or just on the ground here? Ochako asked Toga, who stood waiting by the fence. I was going to throw mine over, but I didn't know if it'll fall on the other side or just fly away. Toga giggled at the thought. Zero gravity is like being on the moon. You wouldn't fly away on the moon unless you push yourself away from it really hard. So, yeah, if you threw them, they'll just go up until I cancel it. Ochako exclaimed before floating herself over the wall and pushing the bags down. She came back and did the same thing for the bags Toga had carried over the wall. 
Okay, just the statue in your box left. Ochako said quietly as she landed in the grass beside Toga. The villain nodded, and the pair returned to the museum's front door. They swung open slightly as the two stepped inside. Their newly oiled hinges knocked squeaking once. We push the statue, then I grab the box, and we bolt. Then you'll float us over the fence, and we'll take the loot and run for the forest a few blocks from here. The one by the park. Toga said as they looked at the daunting golden statue. All Might almost mocked them in the way he looked down. And even though his eyes were nothing more than metal, Ochako still felt pressure under his gaze. Yeah. The hero agreed, stretching before she stepped up to bat. Or push, really. She touched the golden figure with both her hands, negating its gravity. It was a bit lighter than expected, though still rather heavy. Ochako felt a slight headache, one of the first signs of overusing her cork, as she negated as much of the weight as she could. Any further, and the next symptom would be severe nausea, something she did not look forward to. Toga backed up, and with a running start, she shoulder-checked the statue. It began tipping t forwards, and Ochako canceled her quirk, allowing gravity to assist them. With a final shove, the pair sent it crashing to the ground. The floor splintered and broke under the statue's weight, sending chunks of wood and dust into the air. The noise it made when colliding with the floor was best described as the noise slamming a door produces. If the door was on steroids, and so was the person who slammed it. Ochako was caught off guard by the echoing noise, though Toga seemed to expect it, and was already almost out the door. Hey, Hiro, come on! She called back, snapping Ochako out of her daze. It took a moment for the hero to process the words with her ears ringing violently from besides the fallen statue. Toga waved her over, repeating herself as Ochako regained her hearing. Oh shit! The hero took off running behind Toga, confirming that she grabbed the box as she did so. The guards were already running over, probably having heard it across the campus. Hopefully no one in the dorms tried to wake up Ochako because of the noise. Honestly, could they even hear it over there? Hurry! Toga gestured for Ochako to quicken her pace, in which the hero obliged. She made it to the stone wall and stepped beside Toga, hastily wrapping an arm around the girl to assist in getting both of them over the fence. The blonde gripped onto the side of Ochako's shirt, tightly, as they lifted onto the ground. An action that would have been more endearing if they hadn't been chased by UA security force. They landed in the grass, and Ochako released her quirk. The headache that began subsiding once she cancelled the statue had returned, and she knew it would only get worse as she helped lift the bags the long distance. Luckily, it wasn't enough to make her sick, just majorly uncomfortable. She relinquished her grip on Toga, and quickly found the bag that she had left in the lineup nearby. She ran over and touched the trash bags, or maybe they were more fit to be called treasure bags, and floated them up to the pair to grab. By now, the security team was investigating the area looking inside, around, and behind the building for the perpetrators. Ochako and Toga didn't bother sticking around to see if they bought the fact that the Red Street Rhinos had defiled the place, or if their camera trickery worked. Right now, it was time to book it. Darn it. No kiss. Maybe we'll get a kiss in the next one, like, Ochako will open up the box and be like, look at this, I got this for you, or like, Toga will open up the box and be like, oh my god, let me kiss you. Sorry, I- I need- Look, we have ten chapters left. I need- I need- I need a smooching scene. Or I need a smooch. Look, I- I love- I love slow burn as much as the other person, right? I love slow burn as much- as much as the next person next to me, but I need them to smooch. I need a little- Anyways, <laughs> you, I, I don't know if you heard the smooching noises that I made, but um, the next chapter is called Surprise, so it's definitely going to be the surprise, and I wonder what the mission is going to be. I know that there was a mission. I kind of forgot about the mission. <laughs> but um, that was interesting. Toka. I mean, Ochako. Ochako, you being girly pop. And that's a slay. Sorry, sorry. I was, I was playing just to impress. The diva in me is still here. Um, I don't know, I become a different person when I play Just to Impress. Like, I swear to God, I become as violent as Toga, as stylish as Mina. Yeah. So, like, think as stylish as Mina and sassy, right? No, no, no. I get Mina's sense of style, 
Mina's and uh, Momo's sense of style added with Shinsu sass, but Toga's attitude. Yeah, that's that's who I become when I play dressed to impress. I become a monster. I become a monster. Anyways, as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And I hope to see them kissing soon. Thank you for watching.